kind of become real almost time for the tip off this season when you do things like this and you get around the media and start talking about the Auburn program? You know, our focus really right now is um, we've been at it for a few weeks and we've got our first exhibition game one week from this Friday. So I'm trying to think about my zone offense and, and my zone defense and our pressure sets and getting stuff in that we don't even have in yet, especially when I've got four scholarship players returning and uh, we got a lot of new pieces in the puzzle. So a lot of people have been focusing on the 30-second shot clock this mm -hmm. offseason, but there's plenty of other rule changes. Right. Did you guys do anything in practice, or did you go over some of them with the team? And how did you, there's just so many. Look, we play so fast that it, it doesn't really matter. We literally, you know, and part of the reason we, we either shoot it too quickly or turn over before the shot clock is ever a factor, <laughs> so that's the bad news. I mean, I literally can't remember when I got the ball back in my point guard's head to get a good play call run. Just because we're so we're playing so fast and their guys are still trying to show me what they can do, and I think for us, I don't think the shot clock is going to be a factor. I think that the the biggest real changes are going to be the freedom of movement, all the hand checking that's going to be called, and the, the the contrast in let's try to make the game, you know, not have as many stoppages in play, and increase offense, but also um, all the hand checking. So the players are just got, players and coaches are going to have to adjust. And learn how to guard, guard without fouling. So do you, do you bring in someone, an official, to go over? We've had we've had officials three times already, mm -hmm. uh, so far, and we've just called it really close in, mm -hmm. in practice, and and uh, you know we'll we'll see. Um, but but I do know there's there's uh, the freedom of movement is are, is real, and screening is going to be called closely, and and hand checking is going to be called closely, and they're just going to cut down on a, on a lot of the extracurricular activities. I, I'm not a big fan. I don't mind telling you. Uh, because I, I, you know, I, I like our game, and and I don't think you, we should have to have to have apologized the fact that scoring was down, because you know what defense was up, and I thought the kids just played so hard at the college level, and I can't put five guys on the floor like an NBA team can, where I can space the floor, where guys can all shoot and all pass, and our college game is going to be different, and our kids, our kids play it like it's playoff basketball. Like they do in the NBA, but they do it during the regular season. Following up to what Nicole said, are there some changes you would like to see them make to the rules in the future? I'd like to see. Well, first of all, 27 rule changes is, is a lot, right. and 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 you know, I want to make the I want to make the officials' job easier, not harder. Um, I think one of the things that I'd like to see is is in the last four minutes, I'd like to see for them to find ways to speed the ending of games up, and or but also. Um, the, I've been in way too many games when the viewers at home actually have a better look at replay than the officials do on the floor. And it's embarrassing. We put our officials in positions where they don't look good because they, they, they can only make decisions on what they see. We, we have enough technology to make sure they get a better look than anybody else. Coach, do you feel like with the addition of some new coaches and some improved recruiting that the league as a whole is getting more respect nationally? I, I think that the league is getting more attention nationally because um, the recruiting has clearly picked up. You know, where I am on the coaching, I'm obviously I'm a new coach also. You know, I, I wish every one of those guys, with the exception of Billy Donovan, who got a chance to go to the NBA, I wish all those guys had kept their jobs and, and there weren't coaching changes. The coaches that we brought in are, are high profile, very experienced, and have brought a lot of attention uh, to our league. And um, you know, we are picked 10th. Um, we were picked, I even think, slightly higher last year. I've got a much more talented team this year, and yet we're picked about where we are because that's how good the league really is. Given what's happen happening in Louisville right now, can a coach know everything that's happening in his program? And is it, is it fair to hold a coach accountable for everything that happens in his program regardless? Well, the rule's the rule, and the rule says that we are accountable and responsible for everything in our program, and we certainly do that to the very best of our ability. I don't know how many, I don't know how many presidents or CEOs or managers of companies can know everything that goes on in their program uh, and in their business. Uh, we're going to try to hire people and have people that work for us that understand what our culture is, um, but I definitely think that is a standard that doesn't exist in, 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 in most other places. So it's a, it's a pretty st tough standard to live up to. How do you think the high profile coaching changes are going to impact the league this year and in future years? Well, I just, you know, obviously we've got great coaches in the league, great experience in the league, guys that have been national coaches of the year and, 
And uh, I just think we're going to continue to attract better players. Uh, the league is already playing the toughest non-conference schedule uh, in the country. You know, we're picked 10th. We're, picked, we're playing the second or third toughest schedule in the league. Um, and so now we got to try to win some of those games. But I think you, know, you can't win if you're not in it. And I think that's going to bring positive attention to it. What is it about your team that makes you think that you can be better and better than 10th? Well, we got a little bit more traditional size, length. We've got more competition for positions. We're very inexperienced. We're very young. Again, only four returning scholarship players back. So it's like sometimes the best way you can teach is just simply go do what they're doing. Just do what he's doing. And that's the best teacher you have. I don't have a lot of that. That's, that's like year one for me all over again. But that's just by virtue of the roster that we inherited and the, and the progress that we've made in rebuilding that roster. So more pressure on me and the coaches to be able to teach, to get our system in so we can have some success early, but also understand a team with that many new pieces has got to focus on improving throughout the year. Every team has to improve throughout the year. But the teams that are bringing back a lot of players, they're not going to improve as much through the year just by virtue of, of, of the, the makeup of the well, roster. Yeah. Why do you think more recruiting has always picked up in the um, the SEC is a great is a, is a great conference, and I, and I think here's the other thing that we've got to stop doing. We have to stop apologizing for being a football conference. We are a football conference, and we should be proud of being a football conference because we live in the best football conference in America, bar none, and have for a long, long time. And in late October, early November, in the East and in the North and in the West, when they're just about done with football, with the exception of a couple of schools, we're just getting warmed up in the South. We should stop apologizing for that. And so, yes, uh, are they ready for basketball in certain places in November a little sooner? Yeah, they are. So we got to wait a little bit longer until the focus comes our way. But that doesn't mean that our people don't love basketball as much. We just got 90,000 people in a football stadium and traveling to bowl games and playing for national championships.